Hello Gemini and welcome to your monthly horoscope for December for the Sun or the Ascendant. I'm going to give you a broad overview of what to expect but please stay with me. I will then dive deep to give you in much greater detail all the key ins and outs particularly relevant to your sign. Now across October and November, Mars in Gemini has been impacted by the dreamy, drifty and potentially draining energy of Neptune. If you found that your physical vitality has been uh, more limited, this probably hasn't helped. But on the 4th of this month, Neptune goes forwards and that square is diminished within three degrees so that's really positive for you also there is a full moon on the eighth in your sign but that's going to be embracing mars that can be a little bit of a volatile mix but it also can give you a lot of oomph and perhaps if there's something especially around a relationship matter that you feel would benefit from a more direct approach that's going to be very interesting that particular aspect now Saturn and Uranus have been uh, the bane of all of our situation over the last couple of years. For you, I feel there's been an amplification around some concerns and anxieties, but your nervous system hasn't felt so good at times. That also eases from this month, and that is something to truly celebrate. Also, as this month goes on, there is a big move from your relationship sector, which is going to really be interesting for you uh, this year, into the part of your situation which is more to do with deep transformations. We also have the uh, winter solstice, but that is going to be squaring Jupiter, the planet of growth, which comes back into your sector of friendship and future plans, but this time direct. So I'm excited to share that with you. But as the year comes to a close, your ruler does go into a retrograde. So I need to explain how I feel that will impact on your situation and prepare you for the transition into 2023. So please stay with me. If you would like to ascend above this Zodiac broadcast and understand what year 2023 will hold for you personally, if you give me three pieces of birth data of time, date and place of birth, I can give you your forecast. If you order it in year 22, you'll get the rest of that year free. Plus, in my special package, you can get your life roadmap, your character analysis. Having this will help you to understand some of the repetitive patterns that have come up in your existence, perhaps the more challenging ones, but also the ones that give you opportunities. And having a deeper understanding of those can help you to really flourish in this new year. In my special package, you can get 30% off. So please see the link beneath this video. Also, if you've yet to subscribe to my channel, I'd be honoured if you did so now. Please click or tap on the bell notification symbol. If you already have, thank you so much for your continued support and views. So Gemini, as you come into this new month, so the Sun, Mercury, your ruler, and Venus are all in your sector of relating, the sign of of Sagittarius. Now technically Mercury is not at its best in Sagittarius. I think it's one of those essential uh, uh, dignities, the debility there, that's actually not so bad because the seventh house can be about detached listening, the exchange of ideas, but those ideas could reach a, a boiling point, you know, because on the sixth, Mercury is going to move into an area where you're much less concerned with what people are saying and much more concerned with what they really mean. So a more penetrative side of your thinking, which is often strong, is going to start to show itself. But on the eighth, when we have the full moon in your sign, so close to Mars, even though both uh, the moon, Mars, and on the other side of the heavens, the sun, all angle back pretty well to Saturn in your sector of expansion and knowledge and higher education. I think that 
this can be quite a volatile mix, the Moon and Mars together. And I think, you know, even if you feel that you've been quite measured in your observations about certain people or the way you're relating to people has been with a, a degree of caution. I think you can be much more to the point and it could in some ways uh, engender a real connection to someone. There could be an exchange of ideas. There could be an arc of attraction. It's an interesting full moon this one but over the following couple of weeks for us all I think there is going to be quite a lot of intensity about different perhaps polarized points of views being exchanged but for you don't expect to sit still and sit on your hands I think you're going to feel very restless but the fact that Mars despite continuing its retrograde through to the 12th of January is no longer in that square with Neptune and Neptune goes direct itself on the 4th and also Venus forges a really helpful link with Saturn across the first three or four days of this month. I feel that um, there is still the potential for you to uh, to work with your ambitions and goals and that's really going to start to show itself much more from the 20th when Jupiter returns back into the sign of uh, Aries because there it's your natural ability to link with people. Before then, perhaps the preceding four weeks, there may have actually been a speeding up around some of your ambitions. But I think the transition of Jupiter on the 20th can help you to actually connect and network to influential people in an extremely effective way. Now on the 10th, Venus follows Mercury and dives deep and moves into your 8th house. This could tra trigger some kind of reward. It may be a legacy, it may be a pension payout, an insurance claim comes off uh, providentially for you. Perhaps you're just going to uh, look at your situation despite these very harsh financial headwinds we've all collectively been challenged with. Perhaps you're going to look at it in a slightly different way. Perhaps there is also going to be a growing attraction with someone that you've been having some kind of interaction with. But now you reach the point where either it's going to grow deeper and you become more invested or they become more invested in you. Or you may decide that it's something that needs to make way. That's the nature of the eighth house. But in week two, as the sun forges, a really stable link with Saturn. Saturn in your ninth house, the Sun in the seventh. If there are people that you can connect to and feel it's solid, pragmatic, you know, it's something which you can feel uh, that there's uh, some kind of security in, I think that can be helpful. What's more challenging is from the 10th to the 17th, another business uh, proposition or possibility may not be entirely clear as the Sun squares with Neptune. And we kind of get a bit of a repeat of the energy of that Mars square with Neptune. It's just in reverse because the Sun's on the opposite side of the heavens. However, the move of Jupiter on the 20th is very good in terms of the social potential for Christmas. But then as we get the winter solstice and the Sun plays catch up with uh, Venus and Mercury and dives deep into your eighth house, it squares with Jupiter. It's good to be generous. I always say better to be generous to a fault than mean to a fault. So uh, the Sun square Jupiter can be very uh, warm and very, uh, very much aware of how to help people who are less fortunate. And because the Sun's in the part of your horoscope to do with uh, hard and fast longer term uh, finance as well as the more spiritual dimension of the potential for change I feel that you could do something that really pushes you to assist someone who may be having a more difficult time but the 23rd the new moon in the 8th house you're really testing some of the connections that maybe have developed earlier in the month or one special connection you want to see just how genuine someone is. Jupiter again squares this event. Is someone larger than life and very alluring but lacks the substance and depth that you crave for? 
perhaps for you, you don't want the substance and death. You just want something that's brief, fleeting, uplifting, fun and frivolous. Absolutely, if that's what you'd like, why not? But with Mercury, your ruler, going retrograde on the 29th, this is interesting because this is an Earth retrograde. The three previous retrogrades this year began in air, then to Earth, so we had Aquarius to Capricorn, back to Aquarius, Gemini to Taurus, back to Gemini, Libra to Virgo, back to Libra. But we end this year with just three days of Mercury in retrograde, but in your eighth house. If you are preparing your plans for the new year, particularly in terms of your longer term finances or your business interests, this on the face of it may, may sound alarming. But remember, Mercury retrograde can be a time for resetting things, recalibrating things, reprising things. And because Mercury and Venus are very close together at the end of this month, this could see you benefit from some past effort uh, in, a, in a providential way. Also, Venus is in a conjunction with Pluto as this year comes to a close. Do you know, this has the potential to run really hot. Now, when Venus and Pluto are involved, the danger is that Pluto, in its deep and not disclosed energy, is looking for something where it gains or has power. But I think Venus, in a conjunction with Pluto, can provide the potential for a transforming connection that actually is very positive. This could be in a business tie, shared resources, ideas, experiences. It could be in a more personal, romantic or emotional context. So that one's a little bit interesting. And of course, with Mercury retrograde, it may see you rethinking anyway, but there could be a very hot uh, end to this year for some lucky twins. Or it could be that other Geminis may think, look, the relationship's gone as far as it can. This is a time when I want to move on. But this is the most political, sensitive and emotional sign, time of the process. And that's something only you would be able to assess in your unique situation. Now on Christmas Day, uh, the moon is in your sister air sign of Aquarius. So if you can get out for a walk, some bracing fresh air, uh, maybe visit two or three people if that's on uh, on the agenda that could be quite stimulating also the moon forge is a lovely link with uh, Jupiter in that friendly 11th house if you are on your own and quite content with that the moon in Aquarius works great because this is your ninth house of personal freedom and space if however you would like to be with people and you don't have a, 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 a set event set up at the moment. I'm really hoping that that link with Jupiter will see a last minute invitation, which really is very lovely for you. I always think of people who are on their own on Christmas Day who don't want to be on their own because that actually, that isolation, if it's not chosen, can be very challenging. Uh, so you will be in my thoughts. But I want to wish you a very happy Christmas and all the best for 2023. It's going to be very exciting with the move of Saturn into your 10th house of success and Pluto briefly into the sign of Aquarius. And of course, with a glorious solar eclipse in your sector of the future, which occurs on the 20th, 20th of April. You've got that to look forward to. So please do check out my in-depth yearly forecast.